I'm David Crossett, founder of RV Masters, and this video is part of my Buyer's Track video series, all about buying an RV. If you like it, there's a lot more information in the video series, so consider purchasing that at rvmasters.com. So first, uh, dealers play the MSRP game at shows. And this is often how it goes. The MSRP is $40,000. The show price is $31,000, the lowest price it will be all year. What you don't realize is that their everyday price back at the dealership might be $32,000 or $33,000. Remember, a dealer only needs to be $1 lower than his previous price in order to claim that it's their lowest price ever. And yes, they really do make those claims over just a few dollars. So at a show, you still don't have enough information. You don't know what they normally sell that RV for. You're just comparing it to the MSRP, which as we've already covered in other places in the buyer's track, is a totally losing proposition for you. Second, shows are dangerous because they're fun. They're like Disneyland, lots of smiles, lots of smells, lots of food, lots of excitement, and lots of people. Um, it's easy to get caught up in it even if you don't think you're the emotional type. It happens all the time, I promise you. So if you come to a show and you aren't focused, you are in the deep end swimming with sharks. And yes, I have sold RVs to people that thought they were two years out, but they succumbed to the show environment. Salespeople are taught how to play that card and it does work. Don't let that happen to you. Third, you need to watch out for show fatigue. The longer you wander around, the more tired you're gonna get. You start to get trailer drunk or RV drunk, um, and that's where you can't remember the last RVs, uh, the last three RVs that you looked at. You start to forget the first one from the one you're standing in. Uh, even worse, you've forgotten the one that you absolutely loved, but you insisted on continuing to look around, and now they're all starting to look the same. You know what happens to those people? they buy an RV, and it's not always the RV that they really wanted. A strong salesperson can push you through the transaction just because you're tired and you wanna be done. Let me tell you how people get to this vulnerable place. It sounds like this. Uh, we don't wanna buy the first one that we see. I mean, we love it, it fits everything we need, but we don't wanna buy the first one. So my question is, why not? Uh, if it has everything that you want and it's in the right price range uh, and it's hit all your non-deal breakers, what else are you looking for? So they wander off certain that they're missing something else that's out there. But here's the thing, there are lots of marketing tricks that you can fall for or language or different pitches about certain features on an RV. There are always trade-offs. Um, maybe it's a better couch or a different kitchen setup or, or whatever. Uh, but remember how we covered earlier about when you pull on one end of the string, you pull on the other? Well, that's easy to forget when you're shopping for RVs at a show. You start with one RV that you love, you insist that you wanna keep looking, then you find one that has a way better couch. But what you've forgotten is the outside storage space that you really needed that was in that last one. But you didn't realize you're trading that away because you got so enamored about the couch. I see this happen all the time. What's funny is that although people feel like they're missing out on something if they don't look at all of the RVs before they make their decision, what they don't understand is that these are not all the RVs in the world to view. You know, these dealers or manufacturers, they just grabbed a handful of RVs um, that they thought they could sell and they just brought them, they just set them up. You know, so are you sure they're bringing all the floor plans they have available? Um, do you really see all the colors represented or all the options? Are you really limiting yourself to only buying what they happen to have brought to the show? Can you see why it's kind of silly to say, I need to look more when you found the RV that's perfect for you? Just get it. So now maybe you can see why going to an RV show unprepared is a very dangerous thing and you just might end up in the wrong RV. Now, let me tell you something not to do at an RV show, but I see it all the time, ready? Don't invent a floor plan in your head and then wander around the show trying to find it. Let me tell you an exchange that I had with a potential customer at a large show. The husband and the wife went through the trailer and they liked it. Um, the, you know, they liked some of it, but they didn't like the other things about it. Uh, I asked what they were looking for and they described it. I told them that doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm telling you that floor plan does not exist. They insisted on looking anyway, thinking that I was lying to them or just didn't know what I was talking about. Later, 
They came back, I ran into them. They agreed that it didn't exist um, and they had to redo their entire search criteria. So, you know, of course we already covered this in previous videos, but it's worth reminding you, you don't get to pick how these RVs are designed. You only can learn what's available and then find the closest thing to what you want that will work for you. So again, don't go to a show wandering around thinking that you're gonna find exactly what you have in your head. Uh, it's very possible that it doesn't even exist. And here's another point that's extremely important regarding RV shows. All the bad information that I've tried to spell out for you um, in this entire video series is highly concentrated at an RV show. Instead of dealing with two salespeople at two different dealerships across town, you're dealing with 10 salespeople from 10 different dealerships or maybe even more. The opportunities for bad information are immense. It is very often the case that you're gonna get conflicting information and you may leave more confused than when you started. When dealing with potential customers at a trade show, I've heard everything from incorrect towing assertions, um, gross vehicle weight ratings, tow capacity on vehicles, uh, what certain features mean, what four seasons means, um, trailer lengths, matching model numbers, all the problems and gotchas that we have covered up to now are much more concentrated at a show. If you go in not understanding these things, it'll be a disaster. You won't know who to believe or what to do. This is another reason that RV shows are not a good place to get information if you haven't already done the research on your own.